The TOS TV network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest update on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Abia State has for many years been known as one of the major economic states in Nigeria with its great contribution to the economy of the country in terms of commerce and industrialization. Under the leadership of His Excellency Okezi Pazu, the executive governor of the state since 2015 till date, the state has since taken its developmental strides to a greater height. This is due to the excellent transformational ideas that are being put in place by the Governor Ipasu administration in all sectors of Abia State. Governor Ipasu has single-handedly transformed the health sector in Abia State with a great focus not only on the infrastructure of hospitals and healthcare centers in the state, but more importantly transforming the mindset of health workers in the state by encouraging them that the reward for service in the sector goes beyond Naira and Kobo. He also promises that his government will do everything to ensure that no health worker is owed their salaries. We are challenging the, the health workers to also show costs and show commitment and love for, for their patients you know, and those that are, they are supposed to serve. The reward for service in the health sector goes beyond Naira and Kobo. It goes beyond Naira Kobo because it is a sacred function and responsibility that somebody places his life in your hands. Um, I mean, um, it's, it's so important that it's not a job for people who are thinking in terms of Naira and Kobe alone. It's a job, and I, I'm happy to say that my mother was a nurse, was a very super nurse. And um, making all the money in the world wasn't her priority. She worked for Mission Hospital all through her life without pension. You know, but she died a happy woman, fulfilled woman in all respects. You know, I'm not asking them not to look for pension, but I'm saying let your concern be that, yes, I'm satisfied I have saved somebody's life today. You know, but in return, government will do everything to ensure that no health worker is owed. But in addition to that, we demand that we see the internal generated revenue go up. As it's going up, government should be able to see the money. So that we, we, we come with uh, some money to ensure that you know, the bills are, are paid. You know, if you remember, at the point, Tabia Poli was making two billion a year. And their salary exposure was just 1.8 billion. And yet they were owing themselves seven months. You see, I mean, the glaring reality is that this is an economy that is still hovering around the presence of, of a recession because of what is happening in the oil market. So, no state is getting as much as it used to get before. There's nothing like it says screwed again. So what it means is that whatever is available in terms of resources, 
both rail and virtual, including potential resources, all of them must be harnessed. So I can't watch somebody throw away two billion naira a year, expecting that government. No, 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 I cannot. So you must account for that two billion, and even as we prioritize, if our priority for 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 the first six months is salary payment, all the two billion must go into salary payment plus what government will add. Then if we are doing infrastructure, we know we we are raising some buildings, we are equipping labs. We are pursuing accreditation, but every couple must be accounted for. Um, so, for me, um, I want us to put um, our commitment, love, and patriotism, you know, first, and then every other thing will follow. Because uh, uh, you you cannot uh, be so selfish that you want us to, you know, continue to just throw away money uh, without getting value. So we must find a way to apply uh, the resources available uh, to Ndabia, uh, 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 you know, in the right way, and that is part of what we swore to do. Apart from the health workers' welfare in Abia State, Governor Ipazu boasts confidently that Abia State pays higher than any other state in the southeast region of Nigeria and discloses that with the previous minimum wage of workers in the state at 22,000 naira, its government can effect the new national minimum wage of workers, which is 30,000 naira. It promised some serious reforms in the civil service structure in Abia State while stating that his government would ensure accountability for every fund that is released for the various projects and the welfare of workers in the state, and that every single cover released must be accounted for. Part of what we, we will do uh, in, the, in the next few months is to uh, embark on very serious reform uh, in our civil service structure. Ordinarily, the civil service should be a pyramid, top heavy and the bottom, and then, you know, begins to lean as you get to the cadre of the permanent secretaries. But that is not what it is in Abia today. Rather, it looks like a cone. You know, that's why you have so many permanent secretaries without a driver, without a clerk, you know, and then the civil service uh, has become very dysfunctional and it has become very, very difficult to, to carry the body. Abia today pays higher than uh, all the states in the southeast. We pay higher than Imo, we pay higher than Anambra, we pay higher than Ebony, we pay higher than Enugu. Our permanent secretaries earn twice what some of these permanent secretaries as were earned. And um, the minimum wage in Abia is not 18, I think we are paying 22,000. Uh, so now that it's gone to 30, um, it's easier to move from 22 to 30 than to move from 18 to 30. This administration is going to insist that uh, the management and leadership of various parastatals render proper account uh, of the bonus that are accrued to them in terms of uh, uh, generated generated revenue. Uh, there's no free lunch anymore. Um, and we're going to support only parastatals that are viable. Therefore, you must uh, work on your generated generated revenue and then um, uh, expect government to assist you when we can. But to say that uh, somebody can generate so much and then nobody accounts for it uh, is no longer tolerable. We will not accept it at all. You know, so uh, with this strategy, I think that uh, the only way to survive in Nigeria today going forward is to find a way to increase your IGR and then reduce costs. You know, so uh, it, it's a two-way channel. You are increasing your IGR and you are plugging uh, loopholes for leakages. And that is exactly what we're doing. On the economic development of Abia State, the Governor Ipazo administration has mapped out the Ayimba economic city to be modeled after Dubai, which is one of the most popular international tourist cities in the world in recent times. It promises that Ayimba economic city would be an economic hub, a commercial center where some of the biggest factories in the country would be established. Inyimba Economic City is strategically located and connected to nine southeast and south-south states with a captive population of 60 million people. 
It is served with excellent roads, rail, airports, and seaports. The Pazu government is also taking major steps in creating incentives which would drive in foreign investors into the Ayimba economic city, create employment for not just Abians, but for Nigerians in general, so they can compete with the best in the world. We were able to uh, model the Ayimba economic city after what happened in Dubai. The city of Dubai was uh, created in, in about two decades or so. Uh, and we feel that in, in eight years we should be able to begin something that uh, will have profound impact on the economy of not only Abia State but the entire Southeast and South South. That was how we arrived at a location um, between Abia and Portacot that uh, could serve as a commercial center or a production center where uh, factories for all kinds of light materials will come and establish and flourish. Um, because if you do uh, 150 kilometers radius from uh, the heart of the proposed Enube economic city, you would have uh, covered all the states in the southeast and in the south-south. And then um, with its proximity to two seaports in Port Harcourt, within 30 minutes you are in those ports, and the railway running all the way to Kano from uh, one of the wharfs in, in Port Harcourt. We felt that we had arrived at a good location and uh, we engaged um, world-class designers from uh, Singapore, you know, to come up with a business model which has uh, caught the attention of great investors across the world. Uh, one of the few companies that will come there is a garment factory, the, the biggest in Africa, that is going to sit on 200 hectares of land. And then um, we, we have uh, positive uh, interactions with Demla Benz um, and uh, Siemens and um, so many other companies that have indicated interest to come and begin um, uh, manufacturing. Already as I speak, um, Ina Galaxy has about uh, uh, a community of about 100 Chinese uh, within that area as I speak and uh, doing all kinds of things, uh, manufacturing trailers and uh, we know that they will serve as catalysts to, uh, to drive uh, the inflow of foreign investors uh, into the Enyimbe Economic City. Um, Enyimbe Economic City is divided into uh, sub-themes. Uh, some people uh, will be involved in entertainment, there's an education city, there's going to be a health hub and all of that. And uh, those who are going to build the hospital or Tramada hospital in the Nibia Economic City uh, are also uh, prepared to put pen to paper uh, within the first 100 days of this administration. So um, it's running. It has uh, taken a life of its own and the federal government has bought equity. The equity of the federal government uh, is worth 100 billion naira, out of which they paid 20 billion naira. Uh, if it were not uh, uh, a, a project with bright prospects, I do not think the federal government would have uh, invested in it. So um, the only way uh, for any big economic city is upward mobility, and we are sure and confident that uh, we will achieve our objectives. Ultimately, what we want to do uh, is to create opportunity for uh, our people to find employment and then uh, see how it drops off on um, our expertise, our ability to manufacture the little things we are doing here now, but doing them in a better way, uh, deploying science and technology, automation, and eventually being able to compete with the best in the world, you know. So having an NBA economic city will do something about the capacity of the uh, Abia workforce and do something about um, our ingenuity as people who can create things. So all of this have a way of um, making us win from all sides, 
Yes, jobs will be provided, but capacity, great capacity will be built and people uh, will be uh, happier for it. So um, that is what uh, uh, we are doing presently and we are going to continue that track uh, even in the next four years. Mr. Austin Ofomba tells us more about the Yimba economic city with a breakdown of what Nigerians and the world can expect. The Yimba economic city is an industrial city which covers about 9,800 hectares of, of land and basically transverses three local governments. And it's an economic city which basically is going to carry all the investments that have to do with industrialization, oil and gas, logistics, education. So as an investor, we have created a very good platform that if today you want to come and invest, we have an area that has been mapped out for investment, it's a free trade zone, it's quarantined from all kinds of double taxation, all kinds of, so you have all the best incentives for a Yimbe Economic City. Yimbe Economic City has the capacity to take on about 2,000 companies, has the capacity for an airport, has the capacity for more than one university. In fact, if you want to invest in Abia State, just come to the Yimbe Economic City. It gives some of the best incentives you can think of in Africa. It's going to have 247 power. It's going to have the best infrastructure. So basically, it's the investment destination in the southeastern part of Nigeria. So that's the first platform we created. Apart from the Imba Economic City World Class Project, which is currently ongoing in the state, the Pazo administration is also developing the Heritage City, which says the schools, hospitals, transportation, supermarket, and even security would operate a smart system where most transactions will be made by ATM cards and online, thereby establishing a cashless policy in the city. The Heritage City, among other projects in works, promises ultra-modern hospitals and world-class schools, which would serve Nigerians from all over. I'm happy to say that um, our intervention in terms of housing uh, will be one of the flagship projects of our government. Um, a lot of people are interested in um, the proposed heritage city, uh, and um, I'll just mention a few things that uh, cut it out as a special area. One is that um, everything on heritage city, both security uh, and the schools and the uh, hospitals and the supermarkets, all are going to be smart. Um, uh, we wouldn't want to we'll minimize uh, the use of cash. Uh, so you must have the right cards that will enable you to pay school fees uh, online, real time, and then the grades of the kids will come straight on your phone. Um, even the taxis and the vehicles around the city, uh, all you need to do is to also uh, have a card that you can swipe. Um, at the end of the day, um, we're going to have an ultra-modern hospital uh, we are going to have beautiful schools, uh, that, uh, such schools that uh, you can see elsewhere, anywhere in the world. And uh, the idea is to attract um, people that are uh, willing and prepared uh, for a decent life. Uh, it is not for the high and mighty only. There's going to be exclusive areas. There's going to be a diaspora village. And there's also going to be areas for the middle class. Uh, but the interesting thing is that um, waste management and everything is going to be uh, top of the range and we're not going to uh, uh, go back to the way we were doing things before now. The idea is to see if we can use the HGCC as a model uh, and then go ahead and replicate or cascade uh, the impacts uh, in other areas going forward. Mr. Austin Ufomba breaks down what Nigerians and the world can expect from the heritage city, stressing that it is going to be the finest city you can think of. He also emphasizes that the heritage city would be the first leather city in Nigeria, which will solve the five key challenges facing the leather industry in Nigeria, while producing the largest footwear factory in Africa. 
It gives an update so far on the progress of the various ongoing key projects of the Governor Okizik Pazu administration. The second platform we have created is the Heritage City, which is going to be the finest city southeast of the Niger, I can tell you. Why is it the finest city? Basically, as somebody who earns good salary, or even as a middle-income person, what do you need to live a good life? You need an environment that is secure, you need power, you need water, you need, you need a place where sewage and gutters are flowing, you need a place that is secure, you need an area that has the best entertainment and games area. So if you think of the best cities around the world, whether it's in US or UK or in Europe or even in China, we're going to match them. So what it means is that our friends in diaspora, our brothers in diaspora, or even anyone who lives or who is from any of the states, that is 30, 60 minutes drive from Abia can basically come and own a home there. So it's going to be the finest and the best livable city you can think of. It's also going to have, it's also going to have house one of the best universities in the southern part of Nigeria, and that's Heritage City. The third big project we have is basically building on that organic industry we talked about, which is the leather industry. About today has about a hundred thousand entrepreneurs in the footwear leather industry. So whether it's footwear, whether it's bags, whether belt, but the challenge is they are facing five structural issues. One is infrastructure. The second one is funding. The third one is market access. The fourth one is the fact that they don't have expertise in business development. And of course, there are issues around finance. So we have created the first leather city ever in this country, 32 hectares, that's going to provide these five challenges or going to solve these five challenges that the leather industry has been facing in Nigeria. Why will it solve the five issues? Number one, we're providing infrastructure because we have 32 hectares where you're going to have plug and play factories like you have anywhere in the world. You know, so you want to set up your own leather factory today, you don't need to begin to do brick and mortar. Just come in there, release, and then you run. Secondly, we're going to provide machinery because we're going to have what we call service centers, shared services. So shared services means there are going to be machines. If you just want to do hemming or sewing, you can come there at least for a day and do your work. So you don't need to make that capital investment, which is one of the issues that are, we're having with the leather industry here. The third one is that even the leather city is going to create its own microfinance institution that can give money to its tenants within the leather city. I can go on and on including helping them do road shows in Africa and across the world for their products. So that is the third big project we have that's basically going to see us, when we complete the modern factory within that leather city, we're going to be producing 24 million footwear, pairs of footwear, in a year. This is at start. And this will make Abba to be hosting the largest footwear factory in Africa. For heritage, as I speak to you, we are at the last lap of basically finalizing the designs. And by August, we will have a master plan. By December, construction will start. That's number one. For Nibra, we can take anyone to the site today. Construction has started. As I speak to you, the, 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 um, the, the cement work, or what I call the concrete work, the civil work has started. Now, like you know the way factories are built, they're likely prefab. We are bringing in the prefabricated parts and they will all be installed. And I can tell you that you wear any brush shoes by December. So that's the second project. The third one, which is the Yimbe Economic City, which is the giant of all of them, I can tell you that we've gone through the major stages. So first of all, we have what we call the free trade zone license. That takes a while to come. I can tell you that we've gotten a lead investor who has made a commitment of $2.1 billion and that's really is verifiable. They are ready to come. I've been told by the investor by come August, we will break ground and start the first set of um, construction work there. Mm -hmm.